My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Shadows Overloading. We are currently rolling around, but we do have other shoes. In fact, we have some hand shoes, or foot gloves as the case may be. That does pretty much exactly what I imagined it was going to. I'll have that for this episode. Let's change it about once an episode. That seems a good idea to me. The Lighthouse Keeper is confirmed. Let's talk to him. Hi. Logan. Unstop the valve. Oh yeah. I've been watching the water level through the window here. Should be dry enough now for our purposes. Come on upstairs. He disappears through the door behind him. Uh, it hasn't been long enough yet, of course, for him to take his turn on the dusty chest set yet. Crystal Dream Lighthouse. We're at the tippy top. There's a box of spare 60 watt light bulbs. Now, he did mention... <laughs> I didn't even notice the... Uh, Way up in the center. Uh, he did mention that he needs to change these out from time to time, but maybe there's a couple more spare. Hey, buddy, can I have one? You only use 60 watt light bulbs? Don't need much. Ain't that big a lake. Uh huh. Well, here we are. Welcome where the magic happens. Uh, magic? Sure. Be it looks. Uh, old lighthouse keeper, Jack. So can I have the compass now? What? No, certainly not. I need that. But You asked if I had no compass, and I said I did not show it to you. Never said nothing about giving it to you. Oh, well, I really need it. So do I. I gotta calibrate this lamp to the North Star every so often. I need a good compass showing which way's the North one. What if I got you a new one? Nope. I said a good one. New ones ain't any use at all. Why not? Cause how they changed them. What? They changed the compasses? Didn't they teach you in school? Folks got short memories, it was only around the turn of the century. Some Atlas company bought the Patton on the West and rebranded as North North. Then they did a recall on all the compasses and issued new ones. They all point West now and that's useless for my purposes. Okay. Well, how about I find you an old one then? If you can find another pretty new North Compass in at least as good as condition as mine, then sure, I'll swap you. Don't really get the point of what that'd be, though, since you already have one. Well, it's a long story. Never mind, then. Here, maybe this will help you. Most of them old compasses got radium paint on the side, so you can read them at night. This old Geiger counter ought to be able to pick up the radiation from that. You got an item, Geiger counter. Tick, tick, tick. Why do I tick, tick? What an electric tick! Well, electric trick, sorry, makes me tick, 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 tick. I tick, tick, tick. An electric kick when I feel a realistic kick. The newest invention of the Hey Really Company. This device allows you to detect radiation by making an annoying clicking noise whenever it's nearby. Where should I start? Well, most folks consider the kind of compass to be trash nowadays, and our trash should probably be down old junkyard. Neat, thanks. I'll go check it out. An empty and wet bookshelf. Good thing he had his books downstairs. You know, we still do have Obi. I did meet a new companion. Maybe you want to take the new companion out with me. Although Obi's probably close to leveling again. I mean, Obi's been in a lot of battles. Hmm. Next time I take a bus back to the city, I'll, I'll trade you in for a new friend. I thought that I was going to be picking up that new friend, but when I told them to go to the, uh, the speakeasy, excuse me, the speakeasy, obviously that was telling them to wait for me. I'll pick you up later. Let's go to the junkyard. As you're walking down a dirt road towards your destination, you catch a whiff of dog food. <laughs> You had you turn your head towards its source, which turns out to be a pet store. I'm gonna go greet. <laughs> oh yeah, just walking straight past this pet store. Uh, I'm gonna go greet Greta. Greta's compassionate pet store. It's one of those boxes full of bees. A uh, bee box, you think it's called? Uh, smart of Greta to sell compassionate pets instead of indifferent ones. Leave Greta to her pets? No, I think and. Let's head in. Meet your next best friend today. Greta, you presume. Talk to her. Hi there. 
I'm Greta. Oh, what's that? Welcome to Greta's Compassionate Pet Store. I'm Greta. Hi, Greta. I'm Ryan. Can I ask you a question? Oh, of course. Well, where are all the pets? Oh, they're out back. In cages? No, in the woods. I see. What stops them from leaving? Compassion. Okay. What pets do you have for sale? Well, I got a snake available for adoption. I also got a giant mosquito left in stock. What do you feed these? Oh, you don't have to worry about regular food. They'll just graze or scrounge or scavenge for whatever. They're very resourceful. Well, that's certainly convenient. If you want me to soup them up a little bit, though, make them real beefy, I sell some specially formulated familiar chow. I'm a little uncomfortable with the use of words like soup and beef in a pet store, but okay. Aha! Tell me about that special chow. Well, I've got three bags of familiar chow left. Familiar chow is specially formulated to beef up your buddies. One buy a bag, it's only 100 meat. Yep. One bag of familiar chow coming right up. More like going right down your familiar's gullet. <laughs> you got an item, familiar chow. This stuff is made, uh, sorry, this is made out of the same stuff as regular human food. But man, do people get judgmental if you eat it. Thank you, Greta. I got this snake available for adoption. I got also a giant mosquito left in stock. Uh, tell me more about the snake. Oh, you just can't go wrong with the world's most dangerous rope. This guy will fill up your enemies with poison in just 150 meat. Uh, maybe not for me. A giant mosquito? Ugh. Hey now, don't knock it. A mosquito's great to have on your side in a fight. Not only can they suck the blood out of stuff, they can also pump that blood into you to heal you. Mathematically speaking, that's twice the power. Huh? Well, mere 150 adoption fee, it's yours. <sighs> I'm gonna take the snake. Now you just need to give your new venomous friend a name. Hmm. <laughs> Slithery D is the default name here for the snake. Um. I mean, you know, like Danger Noodle, those kinds of things. Yeah, well, sure, all of those could be its name, but what if its name was just Gregovich? Just Gregovich the Snake. Gregovich? I love it. Here you go. Gregovich, I love it too. Hi, buddy. Uh, out of all the snakes you own, this is the only one. Has one muscle, one mysticality, two moxie, and five max HP applies poison to a random enemy. I'm gonna buff the book. B buff the book, excuse me, there's a book here. I'm gonna buff the buff the pet, then read this book. Say, so before you leave, would you like a complimentary copy of the book I wrote? Uh, sure, why not? You got an item, Greta's Guide to Cross-Species Friendship. When you read it, it is a vanity press manifesto about animal kindness. Grants a combat skill, call for backup. Causes your familiar to act two additional times. Ooh. That'd be a lot of poison at the start of a fight. Oh, uh, thanks. Let's use this. This book is pretty woo-woo, but you have to admit it creates warm feelings in your heart towards your familiars. Now it's time to exploit that warmth and kindness. You've got a skill. Call for backup. The best defense is the friends we made along the way. There's an appendix in the back called Trust Exercises, but you're not sure you have the energy for that right now. Costs 100 experience, but it'll give the familiar the ability to act in additional time. That seems valuable. I am going to equip Gregovich the snake, and I am also going to give them some chow. They get one muscle, one mixtegality, one moxie, three maximum HP. Excellent. The Gaiga counter is not something that we can use at the moment. Is there any other book that I need to continue reading? Can be used to further upgrade Orchestra Strike, which I don't really care to upgrade at this point. Uh, 75 in order to get Soothing Flute to heal an additional 2 HP per round. None of the fights are long enough. I'm going to really want to use that. Ah, here we go. The world's sleaziest jokes. Cold from the world's sleaziest toilet stalls. Now, I have uh, gotten one level of stench armor from this, but I just want to upgrade my perk. Do it. And she said... Thank you, but where did you find a can opener at this time of night? <laughs> oh, that's terrible. You're embarrassed to admit you laughed. You spend 40 experience, and the skill is upgraded, and there's 50 experience left, and 50 experience of filth left to wade through. I do it! 
And then she sent it back to the kitchen and said, I'll have it without the lettuce! Oh... You don't want to admit you understood that one. 50 more experience, and good lord, are you... Really? Really? Our... Yep, heard them all. We are getting three sleaze armor from it, so hey, it is very, very, very good. But like, man, that was all of my money. Experience. Well, because experience is measured in time, and time is money, right? So it's just... By the transitive property. Uh, better leave this alone. Will do. This radio is tuned into the wind train station. Good froms are hard to find. There is a... Oh, there's a little mouse hole behind that. I think that might be important, but I cannot interact with it in any way. Right, it's still there. A scrawny looking cat is sleeping here. I need to make friends with that cat. Unfortunately, I can't get behind you into the woods, so I'll just have to accept my lot in life with respect to the familiar I have. There is a fairy camp up here, which I will make my way towards. We happen upon a uh, cooler, which we will check the return slot. We do not find any meat there. I'm not going to buy the, uh, the collar, though. This mess of twigs and sap is a fairy nest. Now, noting that fairies have uh, physical armor, and we're aware of this, it's probably a good idea for us to change away from our physical armor dealing sets. Do I know anything about their type of damage as well, whether or not I should change to an uncursed fedora or some such? Not necessarily. Uh, so used plungers, muscle plus three, and stench damage. Honestly, I probably do just still want to go with Moxie plus... Yeah. Moxie plus two in sleaze damage from the Tin Lizzy Grease Gun, and I'm going to use a Sharpening Stone. Actually, you know what? I don't think I even need the Sharpening Stone on that. Uh, then let's tell the game that I am attempting to Mixamize my Moxie. Sorry, Maximize my Mixie. Uh, and eat a bucket of chum in order to do so, increasing our moxie by one until we eat something else. Chummy chum chum chum. Now I'll knock this down. You fumble blindly in the nest and you find a knife. You pull the knife out of your hand flesh and stick it into your pocket. You got an item, fairy knife. Combat item, this knife is too small for you to get a good grip on with your big clumsy human hands. Also the target to bleed for three though. The fairies put up their tiny dukes as you approach. I'm gonna find them, absolutely. Oh, that's a lot of poison, my man. Oh, that's a hell of a lot of poison. Okay, um... I'm still gonna do the three damage to every enemy every round here, because it just seems like it could be useful. I'll finish off the twig thumper in the front there. No sleaze armor. Makes it easy. Now, realistically, sure, I could target different creatures at this point. But the fight's over, so it wouldn't really make sense to it at this point. Uh, another fairy nest. I fish around in it, and the nest contains nothing but garbage and a mousetrap, which snaps shut on my hand. I get a hand injury. Lower moxie. No, it's lower muscle. You've injured your hand, making things slightly harder to handle. More belligerent fairies. Okay, okay. Uh, sure. Let's see what we can do about this. I want to increase my moxie by three with jazz hands. And I'm just gonna pop folks directly out of the sky. Hmm, there goes my friend. And they're dealing physical. Oh, I had an AP there that I even didn't use. Oops. Um, because you're familiar to act twice, they're not here anymore. Uh, increase my moxie again, really don't need to do that. Uh, I'm gonna debuff one of you and then I'll strike the other with the Tin Lizzy gun, hoping to survive. And in fact we do, then I'll finish you off. Hey! You showed those fairies who's the fairest of them all. A fairy skull wand and a fairy knife, it's me, I'm the fairest. Hey pal, let's chew the fat a bit. Let's do it. How you doing there, Obi? Doing just fine. This is more exercise than I'm used to, strictly speaking, but I'm used to hoofing it, so ain't no thing. Gonna show those dirty so-and-so's a real bum rush. 
Obi will now act earlier in combat. Wow, this thing is horrible. It must be meant to scare humans away. I'm gonna take it back to my room. Wait, seriously? You wanna take this obviously evil, obviously extremely ugly statue back to your room? The room where you sleep? Yeah. You're not gonna be able to drag it out of here with fairies still running loose in the area. Okay, good point. I'll be back. Get another fairy nest. I got uh, meat from that, and uh, fun. Uh, unfortunately, the screen disappeared my uh, gaining the meat message. So I will never know how that resolved. Huh. There are a lot of fairies guarding that nest. Must be something good inside. Bet. I think it's definitely time for some fire damage. As with that fire damage, and a follow-up of an orca strike, I'll be able to take out two of these creatures this round. Okay, very much tend to... Not exactly, but now they will die to the poison. Oh, good lord, it just looks like they exploded anyhow. Toot your hot toots in that direction, Obi. Beauteous. All right, fairy wackadoo. Fair fight. You got an item, fairy dust. It's weird that such vile creatures have such a nice dandruff. Increases your spooky armor by three when you use it. Gregovich also got stronger. I got 10 experience and I am vibrating with nest-related excitement. Another fairy nest? What horrors must await within? I reach in and it's full of rocks, which I inspect as a psychogeologist. I extract all of the useful compounds from the rocks and get myself some impenetrable shellac, as well as some powerful grit. The impenetrable shellac, some shellac comes from insects. But if you don't know that, it can come from basically anywhere. All right. There's still more berries. All right, I'm gonna fight him. A lot of fairies there. Hey, um... <laughs> I have a temptation in my soul. Do I do it? Do I do it? I mean, Oboe first, right? We're gonna have to use Obi's attack anyhow, so sure. Let's start with that. But then it only really seems appropriate to drop a gosh damn NUCLEAR BOMB ON HIM! I hurl a nuclear bomb for 10 physical damage to all enemies. That looked pretty cool. Didn't even end my turn! <laughs> uh, then I will wail for some AoE damage, and then follow up with a weapon attack. It's real close to the end of this fight here, but just not there. And that'll do it. Goodbye, Mushling. You pick through the files of loose wings and limbs to see if the fairies had anything worth taking. You take a fairy charm. Lots three to magical weapon attacks. That's really powerful. What fairies lack in charm, they make up for in... Well, I was going to say skill at making jewelry, but honestly, this thing's pretty crappy. You also got some powerful... Oh, powerful grit? No, it's fairy dust. Ten experience, though. This had better be worth it. I reach inside and see. Hey, a ring! One of the fairies was probably using it as a crown. You got an item, saxophone keyring. <gasps> saxophone keyring! This is not, as you might think, a convenient device for storing all of your saxophone keys. Everybody knows that the best practice is to store each of your saxophone keys in a different secure location. Sax of Violence deals two additional damage per round. Now it's up to five. We simply must. I'm gonna take this back to my room now. All right, you drag the horrible sculpture to the bus stop. A bus arrives, but refuses to pick you up. Because of the horrible sculpture, I mean. You spend the next several hours dragging it back to your room. All right, yeah, I guess we've made it back to Ocean City. It's time for us to pick up our other companion. Just thinking of this thing makes you mad. I'm gonna pretend to fight it. You duck and weave and bob and swat. Are you shadow boxing or are the shadows boxing you? 
I gain an effect, the fairy fisticuffs. Plus three to melee weapon attacks. I'm all charged up with violent fairy magic. Hell yeah, that seems very useful. Television set, unfortunately no one's invented the usefulness there. Uh, we've got a weird rock from Dirch's yard. That's probably fine. I mean, honestly, if anything, that just seems to tell me that uh, maybe I've done everything that Dirch requires of me. I have completed Dirch's quest lines. Okay, just gets hanging around. A lot of people are here. Any of it important at the moment? I mean, sure. If I wanted to equip a bunch of armor buffs and things like that, I might now be able to try and win at chess, but I never know how many I'm gonna need, so why not just get more armor and come back then? Let's head on in here and say, Molly. Hiya, Molly, having fun? And how? This, hang on, wrong voice for the person. And how? This place is a weasel's wristwatch. Let's go take care of some business. You got it, sugar. Let me go iron my shoelaces and I'll meet you by the door. Uh, okay. There's a door here that's still a lot budge. Good work, Obi. Actually, hang on, are you also a companion? No, okay, right. Not everyone dancing in the center is a companion at the moment. Got it, got it's all good. Ocean City Watchful Eye. And I'm also just gonna have a, a quick perusal of these, just in case I had any relevant dates appear that did not jump out to me at the time. As such, evidently didn't. Ooh, that's a... That gun will be very handy, admittedly. Securibus, I'm gonna unlock Sneaky Pete. This Sneaky Pete's a tricky customer. But you've never met a Pete you couldn't out-sneak. If turning the key in the lock does nothing, then what happens if you just put it in there and leave? You gain nine experience. Ah, uh, exactly. The lock clicks open. Good old Sneaky Pete. Uh, okay. I can definitely get eight mysticality as well. Right? Everything. Filter. Filter. Maxing my mysticality. A potion, a hat, an accessory, a pants. Uh, wow, so I have four that I could get at this point? It's exactly one short. Definitely not gonna be able to do the muscle one. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll tease myself by having a look at it. Definitely not. All right, how about our character sheet? Can we level up at this point? We got 48 unspent experience, which is not enough to level up our stench armor again, unfortunately, either. Uh, we've picked up our new companion. I used some of my government-issued sardines. Hmm. I have a couple of new hats. That comes to mind. The boardwalk could be a good time to show them off. A couple of black orbs or holes or whatever those bizarre shadow monsters are made of start drifting towards you. You experiment with them a little bit. Walking around behind them, moving radically to see how closely they track you, trying to get them to collide with one another and so on, but you can't really draw any conclusions from it. Also, they seem to be getting annoyed with all your fooling around, although you aren't sure how you know that. I'm gonna fight him. Absolutely. Uh... There we go, Sax. Five damage each round to all of you. Molly... Buttons will shoot a random enemy for one physical damage seven times. Or kneecap the shadowy orb for two physical damage, reduce their muscle by three. No, I'm just having, definitely gonna do the damage that manages to bypass their armor. You won! The orbs dissolve into black smoke and, I don't know, angst probably? You gain five experience. Hey, fortune teller. I don't wanna complain about price. Maybe I should talk to the fortune teller again though. <gasps> Tony Fiasco, those are my hats. Showing them off up there, I feel bomb. Big and important. Uh, I actually think it's only Satchel's hat that I have new. Hey, welcome back, baby. Let me see that hat you're wearing. What's that, a Satchel's lucky hat? Perfect, I love it. Click, 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 click. I didn't get better, I got worse. Here's your meat, baby. Spend it in good health and come back soon, okay? You gained 30 meat. 
grouchy looking guy still doesn't want to interact with this. The attendant, however, needs seven of all stats at the same time. That's not gonna work out well either, unfortunately. Uh, I'm gonna buy some cotton candy just in case someone in the future cottons some want candy. And then throw my rod out. Push a little bit more out of this pond because we're in a brand new day. Uh, unfortunately, it's just fish for the sack. A little bit of money though, still worth the thing. Damn, it's a lot of fish in the sack. What I really wanted was an oyster. <gasps> Cryptic message in a bottle, a tiny paper. In a tiny corked bottle, I continue fishing though. Another fish in the sack. I think that was called a slum munchkin. A Barry Minnell. <laughs> uh, a fish liver oil, that seems important as well. Uh, increase your muscle by one as a potion. The fishmen carry little vials of this stuff around to protect their skin from the open air. Reel in some root beer taffy, a potion that increases your magical damage, uh, magical weapon attacks by one. It isn't fizzy like actual root beer, but this root beer flavored salt water taffy will heighten your magical abilities regardless. Maybe it's a placebo kind of thing. Fish in a sack, and there we have caught everything that was here. Uh, you know, this is a store, so I could just immediately sell that. And in fact, I think I also got a duplicate item, a couple of duplicate items, in fact, very recently. The fairy skull one comes to mind. So does the fairy knife. Although, surely that would... Oh, they stack. Oh, because they're a combat item, so that... Never mind, I don't need to sell one of them. E... Fish in a sack. That's why I was trying to sell this. I, I, I remembered eventually. I got there. I got there in the end. Fish in a sack. Sell 18. Beautiful. Hmm. You know, let's go back to the... Let's go back to the snackle mills. You come across a wall with a junk scrawled on it. It's only sort of ribbled. I'm gonna make it more ribbled with three moxie. You increase the rebality of the joke, and in doing so, increase the ambient rebality of the surrounding area. More experience for doing so. Alright, snack mill. I'm back mill, and I've got a bunch of stats now. Yeah, I can squirm through with three moxie, but do I even need to? There's a door on over here. The test kitchen. Aha! We have the ingredients for making a dough baby, which is three flour and a sandwich cream. You carefully follow the recipe and whip up a little dough baby. I'm gonna give it a name. What will you name the dough baby? <sighs> okay, what will you name a dough baby? That's a good fun name for a for a for a dough baby. His name is Brad, the E is silent. Brad the Dough Baby! Hey there, Brad! You Already divested this shelf of its chemicals, so I needn't continue any further. The boss's office doesn't happen to have anything that was unransacked. No, it's the unsinkable Molly Button. She shoots you a wink. I'm gonna talk to her. How you holding up, Molly? Oh, I'm Peachy Sugar. Why, some name you? Uh, seems like everyone here is pretty down on their luck. Yeah, everyone's out of Rhino. Even the Flim Flammers and Fake Lou artists had to split down to get a no butter egg s <laughs> to find a no butter and egg man. Uh, sure, of course. You know, I've had some run-ins with a couple of different gangs in town, but I haven't seen much mob activity apart from that warehouse. Well, sure, we know how to dry bobo mud where we eat. Gotta keep our hands clean, you know. Definitely wash your hands before eating. Yes. Pays us for a squeeze for letting them work their rackets on our patch. And sometimes they come in handy if we need extra few yanks for the heavy. I see. It's been a few years since I was in Ocean City, but I don't remember it being this rundown. Yeah, she's been in a tailspin for a while, and I ain't sure why. It ain't the mom's bag, old. Sure, we've been raking in spondylics since Fuzz was given their walking tickets, but we didn't throw this shindig. Huh. 
So Molly's whole thing appears to be gradually making less sense as the sentence goes on. I love it. A huge mound of loose sugar, which has effects on it. I definitely can get some of this sugar in some way. I'm gonna have to come back with a sugar cup or something like that. Something, some suitable receptacle for this sugar. We've made a dough baby. Hey, don't have to be any to get a Hiram's, right? Uh, I couldn't help the street urchins, unfortunately. And, all right, Hiram's. An empty shelf. Unless all of the things, nothing but trash, nothing but trash, it's all empty. Fair enough. Hmm. I'm just looking at a couple of these locations and thinking, I don't know, it seems like there's less here than there needs to be. I'm gonna go to the chop shop now though. Hey, what gives? This is a mongrel. Vaughn system, you give us all of your meat. I pay them the seven and move on. I don't have the ability to fish in that because I think I, yeah, at the start of this day, I immediately came here and talked to Big Liz. Big Liz watches you approach with a slightly quizzical look on her face. Uh, you probably haven't got physical armor and you probably do have sleaze armor. So instead of fighting you with uh, your own gun, I'm gonna move back to the sharp and throwing symbol for a wee bit of time. Uh, and in terms of my hat, Physical armor and hot armor both seem like the most appropriate thing here. Okay. I... I don't really want to join the Tin Lizzies. There might be content here. But... Eh, I... You know what? I want your gang to stop attacking me in the street. Don't get a bit rowdy. Sorry about that, but I gotta explain it to this. You get this far, my girls ain't no slouches, and that's worth some respect, so I gave you a boon. A uh, boon? Like a favor? Yeah, within reason. Uh, how do I know it's not some kind of trick? It's no trick, you can trust me, because I'm sitting on a crescent throne. And that means everything I say is automatically true. Wow, kind of like the Pope? Dang, the yeah. We're really in the hierarchy and a chain of command around here? A neat? Anyway, what if you say you have a million meat? What? What if you say black is white? Look, it isn't magic, it's just a... Uh, look, part of being a good leader is knowing not to use your power in stupid ways. Aww. Anyway, you get one wish. What's it gonna be? More... You cannot wish for more wishes. Ah, guts. <gasps> I wish to sit in your swell chair! Nope. Aw, oh, come on, for a second? Only the boss of the Tin Lizzies can sit on the Crescent Throne. Sorry, kid. Ah, oh, that stinks. Come on, let me sit in your chair. With Bamboozle and Five Moxie. I've never seen a chair like that before. The workmanship's amazing. Ah, oh, I just want to know how it feels. I promise I won't cause any problems. Well, all right, fine. Just for a second, though. Wicked! Big Liz stands up and you take her seat on the Crescent Throne. It's cold and not very comfortable, but it does make you feel very powerful. Wow, this is great. Glad you like it, now get up. Nah, seeing as I'm the boss of the gang now, I think I'll enjoy it a little longer. What did you just say? I said I'm the boss of the Tin Lizzies now. And I said it while I'm sitting on the, crying thro uh, the Crescent Throne. Twice. Nice try, dipstick, but the power of the throne doesn't apply unless you're already the boss. I was the boss as soon as I sat down. You said, while sitting here, that only the boss of the Tin Lizzies can sit on the Crescent Throne. And here I am, sitting on it. Ipso facto, I'm the boss. What you li- And the first change I'm making around here from now on is that changes in gang leadership can only occur via a written agreement with the current boss, which is me. You promised me you wouldn't cause any problems. I don't see any problems from where I'm sitting. <laughs> Take it easy, Big Liz. I'm only messing with you. Huh? I don't have time to run a gang. I'm busy. But I'm busy with something kind of weird. I think I might need your resources. So you can run the gang same as always. All I need is for you gals to help me out if I need backup. <sighs> okay, I swear on the Crescent Throne that as soon as I'm done with this whole crazy mess that I've fallen into, I'll make you a full official boss of the Tin Lizzies again. All right, 
I guess I deserve it for pulling for that trick. You win, boss. Great! Here, you can sit back down if you want. This thing is uncomfortable. I'll stand, thanks. What do you need from me? I could use supplies. Supply shed's over there, here's the key. You got an item, chop shop shed key. It's the key to Big Liz's shed at the chop shop. Hopefully it's easier to use than it is to say. And if you get into any trouble, just give us a whistle and one of the girls will come to help you out. You got an item, tin whistle. A combat item by commanding underlings that the poot sounds made by this whistle. <laughs> Sorry, by commanding underlings with the poot sounds made by this whistle, you'll be a real tin poot dictator. Summon a tin Lizzie to help you once in combat only works in Ocean City. Thanks! <laughs> well, the Crescent Throne's yours now. You can drag it back to your room if you want to! Okay, do that! <laughs> Yeah! Got him! The Crescent Throne, your birthright. I sit in it. You sit for a moment and reflect on your power and your responsibilities, heavy as the hand. You have surveyed your kingdom and decided which parts of it really need to be hit hard with the throne wrench. I'll stay in a rain room and attack that big gun for me! Uh, yay. Um, these are buffs, right? Yes, these are current buffs of an indeterminate kind. I need to go and get myself a, a a little bit of a liquid to splash upon my face. Where would I be doing this? Oh, is there a bathroom in there? No, apparently not. What? I, I moved past this and there was a listen in prompt. So let's listen in. So then when they bend over the water fountain to take a drink, Boom! Huge spritz of pressurized water straight in the face. And here's the clever part, see? It only happens every 20 or 30 times the button's pressed, so nobody even expects it, even if it's happened to them before. <laughs> Sorry, that is pretty funny. Wait, wait, wait. Let me show you these diagrams I have for a whoopee park bench. You're gonna love this. It's always a good feeling to see two people hit it off so well and get 25 experience for done, so hell yeah. It's the groundskeeper from Goldthwaite Park and the jokes and gag salesman from Ms. Brewster's house. They're chatting about something there. Barnaby. A drop of the hill will never dam up the flow. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't think I need to hear any more about that from you. There's the inconvenience up in the back of the... I've still got my physical armor, I believe. So let's head on out. Uh... Wait, sandwich? Excuse me? Oh, right. It's not referring to Sandwich the town, as I now understand Sandwich to also refer to. Uh, it's referring to the pressed ham panini that we found filed away in there. You know, this might actually be an ideal moment for us to pause before we move on for the rest of our adventure. Seeing as the episode is getting a little long in the tooth, and despite the fact that I am trying to make these a little bit longer, <sighs> they can't all get to, you know, 40 to an hour long. Somewhere around there, hopefully, though. My name is from Rhapsody. Name of the game. Shadows over loathing. Serious playlist is up in the top left. YouTube recommendation down below. Streaming past the names of the people so generally supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays. And I love the thank to and a special thanks this episode to Jazzy. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all next time.